Hello and a very warm welcome. I am Ruchi Sharma. We have got you all the latest news and updates from the blockchain technology world. But first, let's take a look at the headlines. Cryptocurrencies fall on risk aversion ahead of Fed meet outcome. IMF says crypto in dire need of global regulatory framework. Almeida research to return $200 million worth cryptocurrencies to Voyager Digital. A16Z leads $51.5 million round for Web3 fraud protection startup Sardine. Crypto exchanges Binance, FTX bid to buy Voyager for $50 million. DeFi protocol Coin98 launches native stablecoin CUSD. Colorado now accepts crypto payments for state taxes. Icebreaker Finance Maple launched $300 million lending fund for Bitcoin miners. Real-time accounting platform Integral raises $8.5 million in first round of funding. Cryptocurrencies fell Wednesday tracking lower closing of US stocks as investors turned risk-averse ahead of the Federal Reserve's rate-setting meeting outcome later today. Bitcoin traded below $19,000. U.S. stock indexes opened Tuesday morning in the red and stayed there through the closing bell, reversing previous day's gains. The S&P 500 lost 1.1%, while the Dow Jones Industrial Average dropped 1%. The Nasdaq Composite also tumbled 1% at the close of trading. The Federal Reserve is widely expected to announce a straight third 75 basis point interest rate increase to tame inflation after the end of its two-day meeting later today. Central banks globally are also grappling with inflation, with several of them having raised their interest rates in recent weeks. Sweden's Riksbank became the latest boosting its rate 1% on Tuesday, its largest increase in nearly two decades. Bitcoin was recently trading at around $19,900, down nearly 3% in the past 24 hours. ETH, the second biggest cryptocurrency, traded around $1,330, down nearly 2.5% in a similar time span. All other major altcoins too traded lower. The International Monetary Fund has called on financial regulators around the world to come together to develop a global regulatory framework for crypto assets in a bid to boost consumer confidence. According to a blog post on the multilateral agency's website authored by Deputy Director Aditya Narayan and Assistant Director Marina Moretti, a global framework would bring order to the markets, help instill consumer confidence, lay out the limits of what is permissible and provide a safe space for useful innovation to continue. The absence of a coordinated global response to the crypto boom has created a fragmented national-level regulation that leads to regulatory arbitrage as crypto actors migrate to the friendliest jurisdictions with the least regulatory rigor while remaining accessible to anyone with internet access. Almeida Research, a quantitative trading firm, is anticipated to give nearly $200 million back to Voyager Digital, which is reportedly on the verge of bankruptcy. In the month of September 2021, Almeida borrowed about $380 million in cryptocurrency. Almeida will return about 6,553 Bitcoin and 51,000 Ether by September 30th, according to an agreement the parties recently filed in the bankruptcy court of the Southern District of New York. 4.65 million FTX tokens and 63.75 million serum or a total of $160 million will be required from Voyager as repayment for the collateral. The business has been going through Chapter 11 bankruptcy proceedings since July and in September, it began selling off its asset in order to return some of the money to its customers. Venture capital firm Anderson Horowitz led the $51.5 million Series B funding round for Sardine, a real-time fraud prevention product for financial technology and Web3 customers. The capital will be used to accelerate product development and marketing and sales efforts. Along with XYZ, Nika Partners, Sound Ventures, Activant Capital, Visa, Google Venture, Vikram Pandit, Eric Schmidt, NA Ventures, ING Ventures, Consensus Cross River Digital Ventures, Alloy Labs, and Uniswap Labs Ventures, there were additional investors in the round. 
Sardine, a company with headquarters in San Francisco, provides real-time protection by fusing identity, behavior, and device intelligence with traditional financial data such as bank account history to better identify risk. Cryptocurrency exchanges Binance and FTX each have offered bids for around $50 million for the assets of bankrupt crypto lender Voyager Digital, according to a report of Wall Street Journal. Chanpeng Zhao owned Binance's current bid is marginally higher than Sam Bankman Fried's owned FTX, according to the report. The outcome of the auction is expected to be announced latest by September 29th. At the time of its bankruptcy filing in July 2022, Voyager said it had total assets of $5 billion and total liabilities of $4.9 billion. Decentralized finance platform Coin98 has rolled out its own dollar-pegged decentralized stablecoin aiming to become a way to move value across different chains. Coin98 dollar, also called CUSD, started trading Monday on three blockchains, namely Ethereum, BNB Smart Chain and Solana. CUSD is a fully collateralized stablecoin that supports its value through Circle USDC and Binance USD held in a Coin98 reserve. Users can mint and redeem CUSD at a 1 to 1 ratio by depositing USDC or BUSD. At the initial phase, the CUSD supply will be capped at $50 million. DeFi heavyweights Curve and Awe are reportedly working on their own stablecoin projects. In the U.S. state of Colorado, residents can now use cryptocurrency to pay their taxes. PayPal can be used to make payments, but as of right now, only personal accounts are permitted to be used according to the Colorado Department of Revenue. Bitcoin, Ether, Bitcoin Cash and Litecoin are all supported by PayPal. According to the DOR website, a fee of $1 plus 1.83% of the total amount will be charged to make such a payment. Icebreaker Finance and DeFi lending platform Maple have launched a $300 million fund for Bitcoin miners. The decision was made as the mining sector battles access to capital markets. Blue chip Bitcoin mining and infrastructure companies in North America, Canada and Australia will be eligible for loans from the pool for 12 to 18 months with interest rates ranging from 15% to 20%. Real-time accounting platform Integral closed an $8.5 million round of funding that was led by Electric Capital. The funding was the first for the company which is aimed at bringing financial data to the Web3 world. This round of funding includes some notable investors from the crypto industry such as former Coinbase chief technology officer Balaji Srinivasan, Color Genomics co-founder Elliot Gill, Hustle Fund, Mantis, Maple VC, Anchorage founder Diogo Monica and Dapper Labs founder Roham Kurgozlu. Integral builds financial management software for Web3 teams. The company has helped process about $5 billion in crypto transactions over the past five months. That's all in this bulletin. This is Ruchi Sharma signing off. Do like, share and subscribe to 3.0 TV. Have a great day.